yeah, maybe look out Mr. Duck, but not look out Mr. Gun Owner. And uh, Tom Paluta is uh, an insurance agent here in uh, Tucson, and he uh, took over his dad's business. Agency has existed since 1972, the Paluta Insurance Agency, and they've been uh, serving the insurance and financial service needs of families and business owners throughout Arizona. Uh, we're here to talk about something that I think is uh, I think is very important. Most people don't know that there's a lot, quite a lot of uh, limits to an insurance policy, and usually the way they, if I'm not wrong, the way they find out about the limits on their insurance policy is they get their gun, some, some or all of their guns stolen, and they realize that there was only X amount, like $5,000 of coverage. Is that true? Well, that's exactly Exactly right, Charles. Unfortunately, uh, normally people find out when they have the wrong coverage at the wrong time, which is, of course, after they've had a loss and they, they want to get their money, and the insurance company says, sorry, you uh, didn't actually have the coverage you thought you had, causes lots of problems. I just want to start off, just tell you real quick, too, uh, I, you know, I grew up here in Tucson. I started out at the Tucson Rod and Gun Club, and uh, uh, Got little marksman medals for shooting 22s and grew up with guns and uh, uh, kind of dropped off for a few years and just recently got back into it again and really, really appreciate what you're doing. I really appreciate, quite frankly, uh, what the the last guest was doing too. Uh, I'm just so happy that people that know of the law are, are doing what they're doing to protect our rights and uh, I do what I can to try to help people. I know, you know, we've we all spend a lot of money on guns, and it's it's not an inexpensive sport by any means. But uh, uh, so I see my part just to help people make sure that the, that investment is protected as best we can. I, I really acknowledge you for that too, because uh, I think it's neat that people are paying attention to it. You know, there are some insurance companies which are fairly prejudicial against uh, the tools of freedom and the tools of self protection. And uh, you're not working for one of them, and you're also uh, and, and your heads up and eyes open about the about the circumstance. So that's great. It takes all of us doing all the different parts, uh, all the different cogs in the wheel. You, you know, you take some of those cogs out, and the wheel will still turn, but it doesn't turn anywhere near as smoothly. What is the limit for most people's policy on guns? Just ballpark number well you know every company is going to have a little bit different but in general people can expect from a typical homeowner's policy or a typical renter's policy that they're going to be covered probably anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred maybe two thousand dollars tops yeah um, mine was somewhat more than that but I did run I did definitely run into the upper limit and lose four to six hundred dollars value and last year when I had uh, right out back here within a uh, uh, hundred feet of where we're sitting I had my car broken into and uh, six guns were stolen one of them alone was worth over two grand Wow and that ran me into the upper limits of the pol that that particular one gun ran me into the upper limits of my policy uh, of course some of the other stuff that was taken was not gun related so there wasn't a limit on it mm -hmm. uh, you know the business briefcases were taken they got everything except the folder with my passport and checkbook in it. Oh, <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, it, and I, you know, the funny thing. I looked in the back of that car and I thought, "Wow, I don't have to haul that crap around anymore." I was <laughs> just for about five seconds, I was happy, and then I realized they got my range bag. I mean, twenty years of right. gun cleaning equipment. I mean, it's just such a, it's just such a, 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 pardon my French, such a screwed feeling. Yes, you know that, and 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 at the same time, you can be made somewhat whole again. I've got almost everything replaced. But what a pain. I mean, it really, it really slows your life down. What are some of the things people can do to make sure that if they have a loss like that, they do get everything reimbursed? Yeah, that's a great question. There's a lot you can do, actually. Uh, first of all, whether we're talking guns or any other aspect of insurance, my chant, my mantra, I'm always preaching, know what coverage you have. Really, there's only one way to know what coverage you have. That is to sit down with your agent, whoever your agent is, have that per that you pay them a lot of money that's what they're there for mm -hmm. have them tell you what kind of coverage you have ask specific questions about things that you're specifically concerned about and above all get it in writing if you're if you don't have a policy in writing if you don't understand the coverage you have then then you're really you you pray to be a victim of whatever they the insurance company says that being said uh, knowledge is one thing. Another thing that's very helpful, not all insurance companies require you to have pictures or serial numbers or IDs, uh, uh, you know, ways to identify your firearms. However, it certainly is a good idea to do all that. Uh, if you have a list of your firearms, pictures, clear pictures, uh, if you have values assigned to each firearm, serial numbers written down. You don't have to share the serial number with the insurance company. Uh, 
proof of purchase is big as well. So that just streamlines the claims process, uh, again, whether you're talking about firearms or any other thing. Now, one thing to keep in mind, too, some companies may restrict certain uh, types of firearms. Really? They may restrict scopes, mounts, Oh, you mean ammunition. because they say that's, that's an accessory, it's not covered. For, Correct. Oh, Correct. I see. That's interesting. Uh, and, and, and as you, you know, inferred here earlier, that some companies are just f flat out not very gun-friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I guess I can name... You can say anything I mean, you want. As long as it a, doesn't a, involve profanity, you can say anything you want. This is Freedom is messy, Tom. Yes, it is. There's a uh, uh, actually a couple of articles on the Internet that I uh, came across recently. One involved State Farm. Actually, I think two of them involved State Farm. One was a gentleman, uh, a shooter in South Carolina. Had a believe. range on his property. Is that the one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you know the story. He was yeah. out there shooting, and uh, they told him, sorry, but, we're not covering anything. Yeah, we're not going to cover you because it's a shooting range, and we don't cover shooting ranges. Right, right. Yeah, and, and your company is uh, far farm, Farmers. I primarily write business through Farmers Insurance. However, I do write business through other companies as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Farmers is not, if it's something they don't cover, Farmers has a pretty liberal policy about you writing policies on other companies if it's something they don't cover. Uh, correct. That actually usually takes place or, or, or comes into play usually with commercial insurance, not so much with homeowners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what about arms care through the NRA? Uh, how does that work and how does that, you know, how does that compare to what you do? And Well, arms care actually is a, uh, you know, it's a great program. It's, it's something there for people who have, quite frankly, a whole lot of guns. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking several hundred thousands of dollars worth of guns, and you know, it, yeah, it's it's there. It's a, it's a great product. Uh, however, it is a little costly from my point of view. Uh, if you go on to the NRA's website, if you're a member, hey, even if you're not a member, you can actually see what the member benefits are. And um, for example, for them, uh, for their protection, it's a dollar seventy-four per hundred dollars of gun value. So, for example, if you had $30,000 of guns, that would cost you $522 a year. Okay, so that would cover for theft uh, uh, beyond, of course, your uh, homeowner's policy, a couple of thousand dollars. Uh, they also have uh, the ability to write excess liability, uh, meaning that, for example, if you're out in the, uh, well, quite frankly, if you're out at the gun range and one of your bullets goes stray and it hits somebody and injures them,